It's Central Bank Week and yesterday was a big moment. We finally had the news from the Federal Reserve that we've all been waiting for. They announced their plans for tapering their asset purchases, therefore starting the process of tightening their monetary policy as inflation remains high. So here are five things we learned from the Federal Reserve announcement yesterday. Hey, I'm Nicholas, welcome to the video. We'll kick this one off with the timeline for tapering because obviously it's one thing to say that they're starting tapering and another thing to say how long it will last for. So the plan is that they'll reduce by a total of $15 billion per month, which will be $10 billion from treasuries and $5 billion from mortgage-backed securities, MBSs. They'll be starting it this month and reduce it by the same amount in December and likely each month after that. Now, keeping in mind that they've been buying $80 billion in treasuries and $40 billion in MBSs, it means that they'll likely complete the tapering by middle of next year, around June or July. However, Powell did say that they could speed up or slow down the process depending on the economic outlook. So it could be that things change between now and then. So the second point from yesterday was their plan for raising interest rates. That's been a big discussion point recently. You may remember just earlier in the week, we had a video about Goldman Sachs pushing their forecasts ahead by a year, suggesting that rate rises are going to happen middle of next year because they believe the Fed would have the seamless move from tapering to rate rises. However, Jerome Powell, head of the Federal Reserve, suggested that that's not something they're considering at the moment. So he said, it is time to taper, we believe, because the economy has achieved substantial further progress towards our goals. We don't think it's time yet to raise interest rates. There's still ground to cover to reach maximum employment, both in terms of employment and in terms of participation. So they are sticking with their need for achieving maximum employment and inflation that averages 2% before they raise rates. And those thresholds are much more important for them to achieve to kick off the rate rises than for tapering, where they only had to see substantial further progress towards their goals. So just as we're preparing this video, we've also seen that the Bank of England have also decided to hold off on rate rises for now. So it seems that we're going to have to wait until rates start heading upwards from major central banks. And we'll most likely cover the Bank of England announcements in tomorrow's Market Movers Daily. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on so you don't miss that one. And while we're at it, please do also hit the thumbs up button to support this channel if you're liking today's episode so far. And with that, let's move on to the third thing we learned, which was the change in the Fed's language about inflation. So they officially tweaked the wording of their statement on inflation, suggesting that now they're a little bit more uncertain about how long it's going to last. They said, inflation is elevated, largely reflecting factors that are expected to be transitory. Supply and demand imbalances related to the pandemic and the reopening of the economy have contributed to sizable price increases in some sectors. So they said it's expected to be transitory rather than in their previous statements where they said that inflation was being driven mainly by transitory factors. Now he did clarify on what transitory actually means for them, although it still left it in a massive gray area to be honest. He said, transitory is a word that has had different understandings. For some, it carries a sense of short lived there's a real-time component measured in months, let's say. Really for us, what transitory has meant is that if something is transitory, it will not leave behind permanently or very persistently higher inflation. So that's why we took a step back from transitory. We said expected to be transitory. However, he also thinks that they are tackling it appropriately. On that, his words were, I don't think that we're behind the curve. I actually believe that policy is well positioned to address the range of plausible outcomes and that's what we need to do. And that relates to the fourth thing we learned, which is the current view from the Fed on inflation and more specifically, these supply chain issues that are going on. So he said that inflation is not being caused by a wage price spiral, but because of supply issues and bottlenecks, which is being met with very strong demand. So therefore he doesn't see it leading to issues with wages. However, he did say it's very difficult to know when the supply issues will be sorted. In his words, of course, it is very difficult to predict the persistence of the supply chain constraints or their effects on inflation. Global supply chains are complex. They will return to normal function, but the timing of that is highly uncertain. But he did say that if the path of inflation or longer term inflation expectations 
move beyond the levels that align with their goals, they will use the tools as needed. So finally, the fifth point, what did we learn from the markets? Well, stocks pushed up to all-time highs, again, not a massive move like we've seen many times in the last couple of years, but a very reasonable gain. The news that rates may not be rising so soon was obviously taken as a positive thing. However, the major indices are reaching what we see as a solid path of resistance soon, at least based on our analysis with the Duomo method. And with earnings now out of the way, there may be sort of limited upside for a while, and there may be opportunities actually in the opposite direction before long. The US dollar was also relatively reserved. Most USD currency pairs are quite range bound or tracking mostly sideways at least at the moment, except of course cable that has dropped like a cannonball after the Bank of England announcement just today. And so far bonds have been fairly mixed, nothing exceptional so far. At the time of filming this, the 10 year yield has fallen a little bit, but nothing too extreme. So on to NFP now for the next big market moving event for the major US markets. And I'm interested to know your thoughts about all of this. Do you think the Fed is handling all of this the right way? Do you think there's another central bank out there that's handling things better? Do you think that the Fed will stick with their schedule that they've put forward, their plan? Or do you think that rising inflation is going to force their hand and cause them to take further action? And more importantly, what markets are you trading, if any, based on all of this? Leave a comment below, let me know. Hit the like button to support what we're doing here on this channel. And I will see you tomorrow. Take care.